today I've done like a fun little bag. This is the Vordenza bag um, by Country Cow Designs. I have only done the one zip on here and I didn't do the one on the back. But the pattern does come with both, but I just thought I'd show you how to do it. Uh, but I really liked how this turned out. I also like my colour choice today. I'm on fire. Anyway, if you want to see how this is made, stay tuned. Let's get started. So I'm only going to do one of the pockets on the exterior, um, just because that's what I want to do. But the first thing I'm going to grab is my vinyl base piece. Now, I know it doesn't look like it, but it's actually a dark green. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to match up this side and I'm going to stitch this one down. So I'm just on a joining normal stitch length. And I forgot to grab my thread. Clearly this is the trend of the week. Okay, so we're just going to stitch and then back stitch a couple. And then we're going to sew along this edge and then back stitch again. Trim off those tails. And then I'm going to fold the edge with the with the seam allowance down towards the bottom. I'm going to crank my stitch length up to four. And I'm going to top stitch one eighth of an inch each side. Actually, I might just do the bottom along the vinyl. No, I think I want to do the other side as well. So I'm going to top stitch both. Now this side's always harder because you've got um, an issue of potentially falling off the vinyl rise. So you just want to go really, really slowly. Oh, sorry for my sniffing. I just went out and fed the horses and I've got hay particles or whatever stuck up my nose. Alright, and then we're going to backstitch. Now the reason I did that is because where we're going to put the zipper pocket, we're going to stitch both sides, so then this side is also going to match. So now we are going to take our, let's see, what have I got? Here's my other piece. I also want to grab... This piece here, so you would have cut two um, if you're doing two of the things, but I'm just going to do one. So we're going to grab that, and then for the lining pieces, we're also going to need, not that, these fun angled pieces. So one should be slightly bigger than the other, and you'll need zipper tape. We need a lot of stuff for this, actually. Okay. So first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece here and I'm going to stitch, actually first I'm going to melt my zipper tape. I don't know if you can see that, but it's very fuzzy, which is not what we want. You should always melt them as you cut. As you can see, sometimes I very clearly forget. All right, so I'm going to cut a piece of zipper tape to here. Now they have all these measurements in the pattern. I do however need my scissors. Um, I swear I just had them. There they are. Okay. Zipper tape and so then I'm going to melt the end because I just suggested that you guys should do it and I'm going to melt this end as well to prevent future fraying. Now we're going to need more zipper so I'm going to chuck that back into the box. Alright. So with the right side up for the lining, we're going to place our zipper and I'm just going to stitch it very, very close to the edge. So I don't want to be too close to the actual zipper tape. This is just more like a basting stitch. Then we're going to back stitch and pull that out. Trim off those tails. And then I'm going to grab the other piece, oh, hold on, 
you know what I've done? I haven't cut one the opposite way. So when I cut these, because it says to cut two, you do two one way and two the other way. So the idea is, is that this is going to sit there. So I actually need to go and cut another piece. So now that that crisis is averted, I have ironed and interfaced another piece. So when we put it here like this, they should be going in the same direction. And so then I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm just going to line it up along the edge. Help if I would turn my machine on. Obviously. And I'm just going to tack it along the edge. Like that. And then trim off the tails. Like always. Okay, so now I need to put on my zipper pull. So we need to do that before we forget. So I'm just going to crack the zip about two-ish or three-ish inches. You don't want to pull it the whole way open. And so then I just put the zipper halfway in and then feed the other side in. And then I look down at the top to make sure that the teeth are lined up evenly. And then I just pull it on. So that is now on. So we're going to take our... Um, what are we calling it? Facing piece. And we need a ruler. And a pen. So it has the dimensions of what you need to measure. Why is my computer on? So I'm just going to draw all the lines that it suggests. Like this. You should have like a rectangle like this. So that's the, they're the lines that we need to stitch. So I'm going to grab my vinyl piece and put this in the center. Now, if you need to find the center, we can just fold it over and do a little clip. And then you can do the same to this piece here to find the center of this one and then just line them up. Now, so long as your clip is really, really small, it's not going to affect what we're going to stitch. So then I can line them up like so, and that's now perfectly in the center. And if we want to, we can grab some clips out of Scully. And I'm just going to put three on. Not anywhere really where I need to sew, but just to hold it in place. And then I'm going to be on a joining stitch length, which for me is two and a half. And I'm going to start, and I'm just going to draw, or not draw, sew the rectangle. Now, obviously, if you're going to do the zipper pockets on both sides, you just repeat this process. And then needle down and then pivot and then back stitch and then trim off those tails okay so now that that's stitched on what we want to do is we just want to kind of cut into those corners on an angle as if we were triangling out corners so you want to get as close to the stitching as you can without actually cutting it. And so then this will fold to the inside, creating a facing. Now, obviously, because I've used vinyl, I can't iron this to make it sit flat, but I can do the Tory squish. So that's when I grab it like this and then push it in opposite directions to give it like a crease. So I'm just going to have to go along and do this all the way along this edge. You could also put wonder clips on it and then leave it sit for half an hour to really help get this fold nice and creased. So I'm just going to fold over this bit as well. So I'm just rolling this in my fingers to make sure that I get 
all of that nice and even. So I can see here, I haven't quite got that out because that should be a straight line. So I'm just going to pinch there and the same with this one. And so now, for the most part, that's going to sit nice and flat like that. Okay, so again, we just want to really, really crease that. You could also use, I use this quite a lot to crease vinyl. It's, um, I got it from Bunnings for like 2 or $3. It's designed to put like a vinyl onto stuff. It's like a vinyl scraper. But it scrapes this edge and helps me crease it quite nicely. I'm just not game enough to try and iron it from the back for fear that I'll wreck the vinyl. Then I wreck the whole bag. Okay, so now what we want to do no, that way. So now what we want to do is we want to put this piece over the top of here like this. And then we're going to stitch around that zipper. So around that top line there. Although I think the pattern does it differently actually. I think the pattern takes this piece and stitches this first. So maybe we'll do it the pattern's way since that was what we're here for. I usually have it up next to me. I'm not sure why I don't today. Alright, so we're going to stitch and back stitch. And we just want to stitch up to that fold like this. And then we're going to come over to this side and do the same thing. So we're going to line this up and I'm pulling this piece back so that it's going to stay out of the way like so. And then we're going to pop it under. Oops. Didn't hold that thread again, see? I should know better by now. Some habits just die hard, unfortunately. Okay, and then again, we're going to trim off. So see here, I missed a little bit. So I'm just going to come from this side. I'm just going to tack it up within that seam allowance I just did to make it sure it's going to sit right where I want it to. And then trim off the tails and throw the excess in the bin. So now what I need to do is the edge that I've just sewn, the bit that didn't fold back, I need to now manually fold it back like so to create our zipper hole from this side. So now I've got a fancy zipper hole with no raw edges anywhere, which is nice. Okay, so now I take the zipper pocket panel and I'm going to sit it underneath like this. So I just want this to sit over the top now if you want to you can use some double sided tape for this In fact, to help my cause, I'm going to put some double-sided tape here because then that's going to hold that piece down since the vinyl doesn't want to crease. The reason it doesn't want to crease is because it's like a high-end soft vinyl. It's just being stubborn. These things happen sometimes, but there's always a fix. So, stick that down. See? Look at that. Crisis averted. I can put another piece under here as well if it wants to just be really, really stubborn, which clearly it does. And yes, I will be sewing through this, but because I've used the vinyl, you can't really iron it. So by sticking it down out of the way, look at that, now it doesn't move. See? It sits perfectly down flat, which is what we wanted. 
Nothing will defeat me. There is a workaround for everything. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to take this and pop it under here like this. We're just going to center all of that up. I'm going to pull the zipper pull so it's out of the way because that's also important. Now again, if you want to, you can add some more double-sided tape here. I'm just going to tuck it under like this and I'm going to stitch this top edge first. So that's going to hold everything in the way. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that these lining pieces are flat and out of the way of this stitching. And we're just going to stitch basically an eighth of an inch from that edge. And then when I get close to the zipper pull, I'm going to put the needle in the down position and zip it out of my way so that I can continue sewing without incident. And then we're going to back stitch when we get to there. And trim off that tail. So now that's the top bit on. So now technically the zip is attached, so it's all one piece, but we're not finished yet. So now I want to come along and I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch along here and then down around the bottom part. So again, we want to make sure that this is open flat. And then I'm going to start here. One more stitch, needle down and pivot, and I'm going to move Scully so I don't drop all of my clips because that would suck. I have done that one too many times. So this corner's just popped out a little bit, so I'm going to use my finger to just tuck it back under and then continue top stitching. So you want to zip that out of the way. Needle down, pivot, needle down, pivot, stitch off the edge like so. And making sure we backstitch at that end again. So now that's on, all we need to do is stitch our pocket shut. So I'm going to stitch along the bottom, I'm going to backstitch. And then I'm going to stitch up the side and along that top edge and then I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to come over here I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to stitch it down this edge so I'm just enclosing everything. I probably should have started here and done it as one big foul swoop but anyway. And that then needs to just shuffle and sit down that way like so. Alright, so that is now our main panel. So what we need to do is we need to go to the heat press and I'm just going to press my double-sided foam onto the back. So what you want to do is what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it and I'm going to pull this pocket through this slot. So it's all marked on the pattern for you. So I'm going to pull that through the slot and then I'm going to iron the foam with the foam right sides up. So I might just need to do a little bit of maneuvering. Um, they say to use sewing foam, but I don't have any. So I'm going to iron it and I'm going to put it in the heat press the way it looks. I'm going to put a piece of baking paper underneath then this right sides down so that I don't wreck the vinyl and then I'm going to put another piece of baking paper on top and then iron everything down. So I will do that and I'll be right so back. that is now all ironed on and I've got the added bonus of ironing the pocket down so that's now actually stuck there as well but you can still use it which is wonderful. So I'm just going to pop that aside and we're going to go on to the lining. Now I've changed it a little bit um, I'm not doing the card slots 
but I am instead going to put a zipper pocket in. So all I did was I took the slip pocket and I made it twice the size of the slip pocket and that's going to be my zipper pocket. So let's start with the slip pocket since it's part of the pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put right sides together and I'm going to start here and stitch across down all the way along the bottom and basically just leave a gap between my two fingers. So you never want to leave the gap in the corner. It's really hard to deal with that. Oops. And I did it again. I'm too busy talking and not paying attention. So we're going to stitch, back stitch. Needle down, pivot. Needle down, pivot. So all the way along there. Now my fabric's not directional, so it doesn't really matter where I'm doing this. Um, you can kind of leave your hole anywhere. I tend to like to leave it on the bottom, but you can leave it on the top if you wish. If you made a mistake and you've done it on the top instead of the bottom, it's okay. You don't need to unpick it all. It'll be fine. So now I'm going to take some scissors and I'm just going to cut at a bigger angle than 45 degrees and I'm going to trim down all of the excess fabric in all four of the corners because I want super nice looking corners. And to get them nice and pointy, you have to cut out the excess fabric. So now we just gather it up and I always push my finger into the corner and then pinch it like this with my thumb and then push that corner out. I find that that's usually the most effective way to turn it. Um, you can do it to all four corners. You just want to push it out. And then I grab my fingernail and I run it along the seam to make sure that everything is out and even and nice. So I will still be ironing this, um, but a good finger press can do a lot for you. So my corners are still not super duper pointy. So what, all I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take my stiletto and kind of dig into the corner and just kind of lever it out. So I don't want to pull too much pressure because I don't want to actually break the threads in the corners. But there should be very little excess fabric that's preventing the corners from being beautiful and pointy. So I'm just levering it in just ever so slightly so that I don't have rounded corners. You don't have to do this step. If you want rounded corners, you can leave it. Okay. So now all I need to do is if I pull that, Pretty much all of that excess folds in and becomes even. So now I just need to, actually I need to come on along to this edge here and roll the seam until that seam line is perfectly at the top. And then I'm going to iron that flat. So I want to make sure that those seams are tucked in, but I want to make sure that this is a straight line. So you don't want to tuck it too much. I'll show you what I mean. So if you tuck it too much like this, you're going to get like, a wonky line. So you just kind of want to pull tight, tuck in that excess, and then just fiddle with it until it's straight. And then we're going to press it, and then we'll be back. The press was still hot from me ironing the double-sided foam on. So I just popped it in the heat press and made it nice and flat. So now I'm going to come along whatever is your top edge. Um, so if it's where the join is, that's fine. I can make it the join if you'd like. So I'm just going to grab my tails because I'm learning from my mistakes. Look at me go. And I'm going to top stitch along the top edge. So I'm going to do three stitches and then back stitch. And I'm just stitching one eighth of an inch from the edge. So that has closed that hole and made that nice and crisp by, iron, uh, by stitching it as well as ironing it. Then I'm going to trim off my tails and I'm going to take one of my lining main body pieces and I'm just going to center this up and then I'm going to stitch around the three sides and then I might also put a split in my pocket. This is something I like to do lately. Now if you want it directly in the center, 
The best way to do that is to crease this just enough that you can see the crease without it being too dramatic. And then you fold this in half like this and you just place this on the crease. And that is now perfectly centered. So I'm going to grab my tail and we're going to stitch and then back stitch to lock those stitches in. Now I'm just stitching one eighth of an inch from the edge here. Needle down and pivot. And then back stitch there as well. Trim that off. From this side of the tails off as well. Now I'm going to split this pocket because for me that's too big of a slip pocket and it's going to gape very easily. But I also don't necessarily want a perfectly even pocket. Even though I've got the line, um, I've got a crease. I don't know if you can really see it. You can't see it on the screen. But there is a crease where I fold it in half. Uh, but I actually just want to have like a little pocket and then a bigger one. So this one will fit my phone and then this one would fit like a pen or a muesli bar or I don't know, whatever. I suppose it depends on what you put in your handbag, really. You could fit like a thin um, tube of sunscreen in there. Anyway. I like to have, I don't necessarily like even pockets because all my stuff is not even sizes. So that is now my slip pocket. So you've got a big one. And then a little one there. So that's that side done. Now we'll go on to the other side. Now the pattern um, does allow, uh, if you cut all of this different, you can actually add card slots in. But I don't feel like a zipper pocket. So I'm just going to fold this piece in half. So that will now be the size of your slip pocket. And then I'm going to take a ruler and a pen. And I'm going to measure half an inch down from the top and one inch in from it, one inch in from each side and then three eighths of an inch down and create a rectangle like so. So now I'm going to take my pocket piece. So this is the top here and then I'm going to unfold this to so the top half, the half that I didn't draw on goes facing upwards. And then I'm just going to place that roughly in the center, like that. And I'm going to stitch that entire box that I just drew, holding on to my tail. Look at me learning. Uh, if you're worried that this is going to slip, um, you can definitely use some pins to hold it while you're sewing and then it's got less chance of moving and distorting on you okay so now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to bring this down and pinch it so that I can get to the center of the box instead of doing it this way you can also use a rotary cutter and a ruler but that's a lot of extra things I'd need here so now I'm just going to cut the center and then when I get close to the edge, or the end, I'm going to triangle out the corners. So I've got about half an inch from the end, and then I triangle out those corners. So by that, I mean create a little triangle. So the best way to turn this pocket through is to lift this up, and I'm going to finger press that so it looks flat. And then I'm going to do the same to the other piece. So I'm just going to finger press that so it's flat and then push the zipper pocket through the hole. Then I use my thumbs. I, I link my thumbs in here and pull it out to help crease those sides. And then because I did that finger press, that first one, I can actually finger press this whole thing so I don't need to get up and go to the iron. This takes practice, feel free to use an iron, but I'm sure you're sick of me stopping the video by now. You can also grab your little scraper and help crease those edges some more, but I'm pretty happy with how that's going. So I'm going to grab some zipper tape, 
and I'm just gonna measure the width of the pocket. And where do I keep putting my scissors? Since I've moved my magnetic strip for my scissors, it's not working out where it's living. I'm gonna have to move it again. We're going to melt the end of both the ends. And then I'm gonna crack the zipper open about, I don't know, what is that? Two inches? It is two inches. And then I'm gonna, I always put the left side on first because I'm right handed so I can fiddle better. But each to your own. And then I just line them up so they look even inside the zip and then just put it on. Now the way I just grabbed that was I put the my finger on the back and then pinched that because it holds it evenly when you're trying to pull the zip down. Now, I want my zip to go left to right, even though my outside one went right to left. I wanted to make it on the down angle. That's my thing that I was doing. So now I'm going to just stitch one eighth of an inch around the box. When I get close to the zipper pull, I'm just gonna hold it up so I don't accidentally stitch it. And then I'm gonna just zip it open a little bit. Needle down, pivot, over the other side, needle down, and then I'm going to zip it back up, and I think I just ran out of bobbin thread. I heard it go. That's annoying. It's always the way. I was so close. I had like two and a quarter inches to go. All right, so I don't need that much excess there. I'm just gonna wind another bobbin. So how I want, I'm doing this on camera so that you can see and it reminds you. I'm gonna start winding the bobbin until the thread breaks off. I hold it till it snaps. Then I'm going to grab my little bottle of oil and I'm going to oil my bobbin case. Now I have done a separate video on where this oil needs to go, but on industrial machines, if you oil your bobbin case every time you wind a bobbin, you don't need to um, service your machine as much because that's the only part that doesn't automatically oil itself. You also, when you're winding a bobbin, you want to kind of try and do it full speed because it, it circulates all the oil through the machine. That vibration is just my pocket of, at my drawer of feet, so ignore that. I also never wind my bobbins 100% full. I only do about 75% or three quarters. Uh, I find full bobbins tend to misbehave and I lose, you know, a couple of meters of thread trying to fix it anyway. So rather than waste the thread, I just don't fully wind them. So now I'm just going to tie the thread onto the old one and pull it through all this like difficult, tricky mechanics. I just find that quicker for me. You don't have to do that. I am capable of um, threading my machine, but that saves me so much time doing it that way. Uh, Cause this bit up here is the tricky part. It just, I don't know. Saves me a lot of time. Never try and pull the knot through your needle though. Um, if you've left all the rest of it threaded because you will most likely snap your needle. It's not designed to have a giant knot go through it. Okay, so I'm just going to go two stitches back from where I left off. Stitch, back stitch, and then continue stitching on. Now I can hear, I don't know if you heard that, but I heard that my bobbin, I'm pretty sure, even though it's stitched properly, pretty sure my bobbin's got an issue. See how it's got that loop? That loop is not meant to be there. So what happens when your bobbin's too full. And sometimes, just because it doesn't like backstitching, my machine does that. You don't have to backstitch. You can actually stitch a couple of stitches and then manually lift it up and go back. 
So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just going to fold that pocket in half and then move this out of the way. So instead of back stitching, what I can do is I can do a couple of stitches and then lift up my foot and go back through the first hole and that locks in the stitches. Although I'm pretty sure it's just that again. Oh no, we're okay. Trim off those tails and then I'm going to come to the other side. So I just fold the main panel across out of the way. <sighs> I didn't hold my thread. That's my own fault. Okay, stitch, lift, stitch. Back stitch if you want to, it all works. Okay, so that's my zipper pocket done. I'm just gonna zip it open and we're leaving the bottom of the pocket open because that'll be my last seam of the bag. Alrighty, next up, we are doing our top zipper. So I've got four of these. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some double sided tape, flip them all over, and I'm going to fold over, actually I'm going to double sided tape this edge. What I can do is I can just add all of these in, butt it up against each other, make like a train of taped pieces like so and then chop off there and then I can just separate them all like that that was a bit quicker so now I'm just going to fold one edge under now if your pattern's directional you might want to think about how you're doing this but I just want to fold them under so that they're all the same length so even if you've cut them a little bit crooked as you were cutting, which sometimes does happen, we just want to make sure that right now they're all going to be exactly the same size. And I'm throwing out the rubbish as I go because it's nice to have a neat workspace. I've moved my bin within arm distance and it now has a permanent home, which has definitely helped my cause. Okay. Now I need some zipper. Do, 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 do. Chop it. Singe it. Do the end that we just cut it off as well. Make sure that this doesn't fray too much. Okay, so now I'm just gonna crack the zip like a little bit and I'm gonna bend it down at a right angle and then just tack it down. Now I know a lot of people are into the baker method where I can just push it and do it. Um, I will do it one day, not today. Apparently my machine is fighting me because it keeps coming unthreaded. Right, world's longest thread, now it shouldn't do it. So we're just gonna tack it right along the edge so that we won't see the stitches later. You just wanna back stitch a couple of times. And then we're going to turn the other side down and just copy it. So you want it to be the same, everything pretty much, like that. And then you can tack this down. And then back stitch a little bit. Trim off the tails so it's less messy. And now that I know that I've got both ends 
the way I want. I'm going to separate it because I find this way easier personally. So I've got my folded end this way and I'm going to lay the zipper along the top there and then grab another piece. Again, the folded end is this end and we're just going to lay it down on top of each other. Now I'm going to stitch around the edge. I'm going to stitch and back stitch. Go over. Needle down and pivot. Now I'm going to sew up against the zipper tape. Like that. And then back stitch when we get to the fabric end. Like so. So now we should have that. And we're going to repeat the step of the process with the other one. So again, folded edges this side. And then this is going to come down on the other edge. Now, if you want to, you can clip it. I should show you clipping. Sometimes I clip things. Sometimes I just can't be bothered. But we'll clip this side. The other way is more of a speed sewing kind of deal. And then we're going to sandwich this right sides down. So lining's right side up, zipper's right side up, and then your outside exterior piece is right side down. So this time, to keep the zipper where I need it, let me just check on my bobbin. So I'm going to start at the folded end. I'm going to back stitch. And then I'm going to stitch along. Needle down, move my clips out of the way, pivot, sew across the edge, and back stitch. And then trim off those tails. Okay, so now we just pull this out so that right sides are facing, like so. And then I'm going to top stitch all four sides with a 1 8 seam allowance. So this is going to seal that end. It's going to help the zipper to sit flat and nice like this. Needle down, pivot. And I'm also going to sew along the raw edge just to seal it as one piece. Like that. And then back stitch. So I'm going to do the same again. So you can start wherever. I'm going to start on the raw edge for this piece because it's facing in the other direction. Needle down and pivot. And again. Needle down, pivot the last little bit, and then back stitch just to lock those stitches in. Trim up all the tails like that. And so now we've got our two zipper parts. So I'm going to take the side with the zipper. And I'm going to lay the zipper down so that the closure is going to be on the same side. And I'm just going to tack that down. So if you need to find the center, I should show you this. You need to find the center, fold it in half, clip it, fold this in half, clip it, and then just match those two clips that you've done. Whoops like so, and then I'm just going to tack that down. You can also just eyeball it. I'm okay at eyeballing it. If you make enough bags, you can eyeball the center. <coughs> oh, I need a drink. Okay, same with the other one. Clip the center. 
clip the center. And you'll notice that I'm putting lining sides together and the right sides are up. So I'm just tacking that down within the seam allowance so that we're not going to see these stitches. But now I don't need to clip it, which is sometimes a good thing. So now I'm going to take, these are my ring connectors. So I'm going to take some double-sided tape and put a line of double-sided tape down both the centers. So butt them up against each other. It's just a little bit quicker. Like that. You can also just iron this. I have chosen to use fabric instead of vinyl, mainly because I always use vinyl and I don't want people to think that they can't do fabric strap connectors. Um, I have interfaced this with a medium woven just to give it the added strength so it will carry everything. I could have also put some hefty interfacing, which is what I did on the main outside panels. Now, got a couple of options. You can stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge or you can stitch an eighth of an inch from the center. I'm going to do the edge just because I feel like it. Now instead of cutting it off to do the other side, I'm just going to stitch across because it's actually quicker. And you'll also notice that I don't need to back stitch this. You can. Out of habit I usually would but it's not actually technically necessary. All right, and then separate them and grab your rings and you want to put the side with the fold together. So wrong sides together. And then we're going to do the same again, wrong sides together like this and like that. Done! So now I'm going to take my outer and I'm going to stitch the sides together. Now firstly what I want to do is I'm going to take some wonder clips and I'm going to clip the top and the bottom because it's important that they match like this. And then I'm going to come up to where the vinyl or the top meets the bottom and I'm going to clip it there so it matches. And then I can just add a few other clips in if I feel the need. So I'm going to do the same to this side. So I'm going to start at the top, match it, bottom, match it, and then come to the accent and then match that up. You want that to match up. You've put a lot of effort to making it, now you want it to match. As many clips as you feel necessary. And then we are going to stitch down those sides. There's a couple of ways you could do this, but this is the way I've decided to do it. Um, you could also stitch these pieces on and then stitch all the way down. Um, well, the rest are really. This is the way I'm choosing to do it. Stitch down the side, back stitch when we get to the end, pull it out, trim off the tails, do the other side, back stitch. And then I can box these corners while I'm here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center of this side and push it to the seam allowance on the other side. And I'm going to open this out so it's flat, so it's going to give me a more even distribution of thickness. And that's definitely going to help if you're on a domestic machine. I'm going to do the same to this side. So again, squish it out. Oh, 
itchy nose. Should have gone to the horses after the video, but anyway. All right, and then I'm just going to stitch along there, making sure that I back stitch. Trim. Then I do this side, squish the bag down so that I can get it under the machine. See that? That tail's going to annoy me. Alright, grab my thread. Oops. Stitch across the bottom, back stitch. Oops. Now that I've done that, I'm going to take my strap connectors and evenly distribute them at that side seam and I'm going to put two clips on them to hold them in place. Uh, one just won't cut it, so you should always do two. You also want to flatten out that seam uh, so that we're going to evenly distribute the bulk. So that's that bit done. Pop that down there. So now I'm going to join all of this so the first thing i want to do is fold this over and clip it out of the way because we don't want to accidentally put that zipper into the seam so by folding it on itself and clipping it i can now easily get to the side without worrying about it so we're going to stitch and back stitch all the way down the bottom Clip, clip there, and then we're going to do the other side. Oops, did it again, forgot to grab it. I'm just going to get in the habit of it and it'll be fine. Like so. Trim off the tail. Now, with the bottom, actually, our zipper probably pocket is probably big enough to get it through. So I'm actually going to stitch the whole bottom shut. Back stitch. Stitch along and back stitch. From the tails and then I'm going to box these corners as well. Now if you haven't got a zipper pocket leave a gap in the bottom and then I'm just going to stitch over the corner. Now you can either evenly distribute all of the fabric on each side or you can push one one way and one seam allowance the other way. But when we come to this end and boxing this end's corner, you just want to make sure that whatever you did, we're going to make sure that this seam sits the same way as the other side. So if you flattened it open, flatten this side open. If you push it to one side, push it to one side again. Just stitch over the corner like so. So now that is all lovely and boxed. So I'm going to turn this one right side out and I'm going to leave the clips on the zip because I can. And then we're going to take the outside, which is wrong sides out, and put the lining so that right sides are going to touch each other. And then the first thing I want to do is put this seam in line with this other seam here. And then I'm going to do the same to the opposite side. So we're going to line up the seams. Now obviously there is that um, strap connector between them, but you can still see how they match up, so it's fine. And 
and then I'm just going to add some clips all the way around. Now, add as many or as few as you like. I actually don't think I need that many, but I'm doing it because I get a little bit clip happy. I could actually do this whole side with like three clips. I'll do four that side. So now I've got it clipped, I'm going to have it lining side up and slot it under the machine. I'm going to fold back this out of the way and just hold it with my thumb and just take off one of the clips to have a gap to start sewing. Like that. And then we're just going to slowly stitch along. So I'm going to be lifting this up and around because it is a 3D object. Ah! Knocking my clips off, always a fun one. So I'm just lifting it up and around because it is a 3D object. So I'm treating it as such. The straighter parts are always a little bit easier, so you can go a little bit faster there. But again, we're just going to keep bringing it around as a 3D object, because you get a nicer, flatter sew if you do it like that. We're nearly back to the start. Then when you get back to the start, I usually go over three or four stitches and then back stitch. And then pull it out, trim off the tails. And then I'm going to turn the whole bag through my zipper pocket. So I always grab a corner first and pull that through. And then I'm just going to maneuver it. I know I look like I'm being violent, but I'm actually being very, very gentle with the bag. I just want to slowly and carefully pull it through the zipper pocket. Now, if you didn't do a zipper pocket, you would have left a gap in the bottom of the base of the bag, uh, which is also fine. And then I'm just going to put my hand back inside and push those corners out and see how that lines up perfectly. That's what we wanted on both sides. That's why we use the extra clips there to make sure it all lines up well. So now I'm going to pull the zipper pocket out and I'm just going to tuck in about, about half an inch or thereabouts. So I just want to tuck it in so that there's no raw edges showing. And then I'm going to stitch, back stitch. And then stitch as close to that edge as I can without running off it. We don't want to run off. And then you can tuck that back inside the bag. And we're not finished. We're nearly finished, but we're not actually finished yet. So. I'm going to push the lining in the bag, like so. Then I'm going to roll this seam. Oh, see, I like how this is coming together. Now, I think I want to top stitch along here, but the best way to do that is actually to turn the bag inside out. So let's do that. I know this may seem counterintuitive, but just trust me on this. So I'm going to crank it up to a decorative stitch length, move Scully out the way. And so now I just got to make sure everything's nice and flat. And I'm going to top stitch 
one eighth of an inch from the edge. Now, if you're new to top stitching, just do a full quarter inch because it's easier for your foot to sit and stay still. Uh, but if you are intermediate or advanced, you should do an eighth of an inch. A quarter of an inch will still look nice. It's just a little bit easier while still actually allowing for a top stitch. So I'm just, again, I'm treating this as a 3D object because it is. So I'm just moving it around as I'm stitching. Kind of look like I'm torturing the bag, but I promise it'll be fine. If it can't handle this, then it probably can't handle any kind of weight in it either. And then when you get back to the start, you just want to go through two stitches and back stitch. And then pull this out. Remove that tail and then we can turn the bag back out the right way. Cool. So now we need to put our other zipper piece on. So I'm going to just grab the ends because I know they're meant to be even and I'm going to put half the zipper in and then the other half and just line them up and then pinch it and pull it down. Look at that. So now we just need to add our zipper tab to the end, which I have here. There's a couple of ways you can do this. I am going to show you a different way that I haven't done before. So I'm going to put double sided tape on each of the outer longer edges. Like this. And then peel off the backing. Put it in the bin. And then I'm going to take the zipper end and I'm going to fold those edges over the zip like this so that there's no zipper hanging out the end and then I can just fold it in half and then stitch that down and that's going to be another fun looking zipper. It's just another different way to do you know ultimately the same thing. So I'm just going to tuck that out of the way, hold my bag up so I've only got about half an inch of zip actually in the zipper tab. I'm going to fold it over like this. And then I'm going to start stitching on that open edge. Oh, really? I thought I had enough tail that time. I really did. It's not going to be my day for sewing. I can already tell. I have a lot of sewing to do today. All right. Stitch, back stitch. Needle down, and then we're gonna pivot. I'm gonna move that tail out of the way. Pivot down. Pivot again. Now, so that I don't have the bulk of the bag in here for the last bit. I'm actually going to spin it back the other way so that the bag's not getting in my way for this final edge. I'm also trimming off all the tails so they don't get knotted up. And then we're going to back stitch and finish that bit off. And there's my tab. So we can set the bag aside. The bag's done. It looks lovely. I actually really love that bag. It's pretty. So then I'm going to grab my strap. So I'm doing all and half fabric. I have already ironed the fabric so that I didn't have to stop the video any more than I necessary. So I'm going to take some double sided tape and put it down the center. And I'm going to peel that off and then just for something different, we're doing a different um, thingo today. So instead of what we normally do, 
Uh, actually, no, I can't do that. I haven't cut it the right size. I just realized. We'll do it in a different one next time. I haven't cut it the right size to do what I wanted to do. Alright, so I'm just going to fold the centre in. Now this is a very, very soft, supple chair vinyl, to be honest. The guy that sold it to me made a chair out of it. It's like bottle green. It's actually a really nice dark green. It just doesn't go with a lot of stuff. Greens are a bit funny like that. They either go or they don't. But this one had a lot of this colour in the fabric that I chose. Alright, so we're just squishing it all into the centre like this. I've got a bunch of tails that I've picked up from the, I don't know, the bin when it was dangling in it. I mean, on the positive, my double-sided tape is super sticky. Okay, so I have folded over one of the raw edges, but not the other end in case it didn't fit. Um... I'm just going to pull out some more tail. These things can never be trusted, it would appear. And I'm going to hold on to it. I'm learning from my mistakes slowly. So I've actually wound it around my finger, so now it can't disappear anywhere I can't grab it. And we're going to stop with the needle down and then pivot. Now this fabric was from Spoonflower, so it's actually quite a stiff cotton. And I'm going to stop with the needle down and I'm just going to trim this tail so I don't have to do it later. And I'm stitching one eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric. start like I am you can actually just um put some more double-sided tape down or you could clip the two pieces together this is what I found is ultimately quickest for me so this is what I do um, and all vinyls come in different lengths so I just need to chop off just a little bit from my fabric and I've just left about half an inch overhang so that I can tuck that under and then there's no raw edge of the fabric that you can see on the strap which will stop any fraying. is always quicker uh, because it's already been placed where you need it but you should never go full full speed um, I find that sometimes you get little bumps in the stitches on the back so I never go full speed but I do go fast -er. so I'm just going to thread this up through that center piece and then over and I'm gonna do my zigzag closure on here so we're just gonna stitch and then back stitch and then go across and then on the diagonal so we're going to do a zigzag so we're in line with those bottom stitches and then come across the bottom and then angle back up and stitch up there now I could stitch the sides and go all the way around the square again but that's gonna be enough so now we're gonna grab the bag and I'm going to hold the strap and I'm going to put, there's my little tab thing here. So I'm going to go from the bag out with the vinyl touching the ring. And then I'm going to go up 
through one side of the strap connector and down the other. And then I always, always, without fail, pull tight to make sure I didn't accidentally put any twists in there. And then we're going to come to the other one and we're going to come from the outside in to the strap. And that way that that raw edge will be on the inside of the strap so that we're not going to see it. So now I'm just going to do that same zigzag again. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to stitch. I'm going to back stitch. That's only like two back stitches, but that's enough. Zigzag down. We're going to go across. Needle down. And then we're going to angle it back and come up to where we started. And then back stitch again. And that is your bag all done. I like it. It's super cute. I love the zip. I am a fan. Um, you could definitely put a second one. The pattern does come with it. I just decided to only do one today. Um, another thing you, I could have done is I could have folded this down and top stitched this down when I did my top stitching. Uh, but I chose not to because I didn't want to. That also could be a little bit too thick for a domestic machine. So I chose not to do that. Uh, but yeah, I hope this was a fun tutorial and I think the next one's going to be a top I want to make myself. So we'll see. But anyway, thanks for tuning in guys. Bye.